Hello everyone, welcome to the Narc Survivor YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to be telling you something you should never do with a narcissist. Please give the video a thumbs up down below. Hit subscribe and click all notifications to be notified when I upload a new video. And if you would like to book a one-on-one -on -one coaching session with me, just go to my website, it is narcsurvivor.co.uk. Never do this with a narcissist. There are certain things that you should never do with a narcissist. You can do these things with people who are not narcissists, but once a person has confirmed to you that they are not to be trusted, you have to start to deal with them differently. Otherwise, it's going to leave you in an undesirable situation because you will often experience disagreements with narcissists and you will always be left to find a solution to the problem where you're having to solve or explain something or you're having to put things in order after something they've done wrong and you may decide to come to some form of agreement in light of something that you both want the only problem is they're not going to play by the rules they're not going to adhere to the conditions that have been set they will agree to it and they will act as though they understand, as though it is fair, just and impartial. But they won't have any intentions in fulfilling their obligation to keep the agreement. They will not go along with a set of decisions about how things should be done, which can be frustrating. But it is something that you will unexpectedly be faced with. Because when you're dealing with narcissists, nothing ever goes to plan. Nothing pans out as clearly expressed, identified and specified as previously discussed and arranged with them. Because narcissists do not like to play by the rules. They don't like rules. Whether they're rules that you have set together or conditions that were imposed by the law or another body of authority. Because in their minds, rules are for the gullible and weak-minded so they don't play by the rules. They will go along with it, they will consent to agree to certain proposals, and they will act like they highly respect rules, laws and regulations, but that's only to keep you in that mindset of operating and behaving, where you're wanting to follow the correct line of behavior, but they're not going to play by the rules because they want the advantage, which is why the worst thing you can do is to negotiate or compromise with them because they're not going to act in accordance with it. They're not going to keep the agreement. So any settlement of differences by arbitration or by consent reached by mutual concessions will be broken at some point. They're not going to honor it because it's not going to favor them. And they don't want you to choose a better option or situation. So they're not going to be honest about it. They're just going to play along. They will pretend to cooperate in order to manipulate the situation for their own advantage because they want you to uphold your end of the bargain. They want you to do what you have agreed to do while they pretend to fulfill their promise. And this is the only reason why they remain ahead of you because in unrestricted view, they're doing everything as agreed but secretly, they're not following any of that. They will pretend to behave in a good and moral way, as though they do not break the law, and they're decent, upstanding members of society. They will even express complete disapproval of people who behave unacceptably, and it can seem very convincing, but it's just to reduce your worry, anxiety and fear to prevent you from thinking that they would be that type of person. They will say it's appalling that some people use drugs because it causes their lives to feel unmanageable and that those people must be lacking good sense or judgment when they're doing it themselves behind your back and you may not even be aware of it because this is something that's deeply ingrained in their character. They receive an emotional boost or thrill when they successfully cheat or deceive another person or organization 
it gives them such a rush that it can lead them to repeat their dishonesty even when there's no reward other than the high itself. Because they experience a sense of joy when they get away with a lie. They get a little kick of dopamine when they get away with something scot-free. It's an emotion that can lead them to tell bigger and bigger lies because in a situation where they should be experiencing difficulty, worry or inconvenience, things are now going their way. And when this happens, you may see their narcissistic smirk. This look of evilness, inhumanity and smug superiority that is not grounded in reality. Because they've gotten away with something, so they think they're better than you. Because it's temporarily relieved their shame. They got you. They did something they weren't supposed to do. So they transferred their emotions onto you because they had the ability to manipulate you, which is why they like deceiving people. They like to use you to make themselves feel better by feeling like they have an advantage over you because in their minds, it means that they are better than you. They like how it feels to keep you in the dark. They deliberately misguide you so that you may act in ways that are foolish or unreasonable because you've been led by wrong and inappropriate motives and ideals while they're doing something completely different behind your back because they're giving off the impression that they're stable and consistent as though they're not deviating from the agreement because that's how they want it to appear to be they want it to appear as though they are upholding the settlement of differences that both of you agreed to because then it takes the pressure and focus off of them while they still get to do what they want to do in spite of opposition. They don't like compromise or negotiations because they don't like boundaries or rules. They prefer enmeshment. They prefer it when people are emotionally reactive to each other and wholly intertwined in, a, in an unhealthy way. Which is why they typically avoid people who do have strong, healthy boundaries. But even if you do have boundaries, they will try to get you to go outside of them. They will try to change your mind. They will try to change the way you see things. But if you remain strong, they will leave. Because they don't like people who have very fixed habits and ideas. They don't like people who restrain their impulses, but some of them will still try because they like a challenge. So they will test you to see if they can get away with it. They will gradually push your boundaries. Having boundaries does not mean that they will just leave you alone. They will still try and they will pressure you. But if you remain firm, Eventually, most of them will remove themselves because it's too difficult for them to change you. They can't get you to see things their way. They like people who have weak boundaries, people who lack confidence in themselves, people who overthink. Because when people overthink, it creates more confusion and that's what they like. They like people who are easily distracted because then they can disrupt your ability to think and focus because people who overthink tend to make the wrong decisions. So if they see that you're overthinking, they will exert a lot more force on you in a vigorous effort to obtain what they're looking for. And they will take the time to learn the threshold or level of intensity for which a certain reaction, result or condition may occur. They will identify what they can push and what, they, what tricks or dishonest means they can use to get what they want so that they can still have their way. And by the time they've become involved with you, they've already studied you and acquired complete knowledge of how to manipulate you. Because they're predators, 
So they carefully observe their prey. And most people are like this. They enjoy scheming and plotting. And they will persuade you to do something by lying to you because they spend a lot of time watching other people, especially in public places. They're always looking for victims. They don't want to participate or become involved in anything, but they love to watch. They have a sick interest in observing unsuspecting people, especially when they're engaged in behaviors that are usually private, such as undressing or engaging in sexual activities and it may involve fantasies, urges, and non-consented behaviours. They may even use binoculars or mirrors for a better view. They are so consumed by their voyeuristic thoughts that they are often distressed and unable to function. They may act on the urges with a person who has not given consent, and they may even commit crimes such as privacy invasion or trespassing because they get addicted to the thrill of getting caught. But if they do ever get caught, then they're like a deer in the headlights. They're perverts. They enjoy distorting and corrupting the original course, meaning or state of something. They get off on leading people away from what is considered natural and, uh, and acceptable because they're corrupt, deviant and degenerate. Their behavior is abnormal and unacceptable. They like doing things that they know they shouldn't be doing. Things that they know other people wouldn't want them to do. Things that other people would never agree to. They have the same psychology as a rapist. And rape is a crime rooted in non-sexual motivations. It's tied to hostility, anger, and the need to exert power and control. They feel powerless and they have low self-esteem because believe it or not, but they actually view us as manipulative and exploitative. They see it as though we are exercising unfair control or influence over them, which is why they often enjoy degrading and humiliating their victims because this is just what they're used to. They're used to not getting what they want. They may not have had much exposure to people especially those of the opposite sex, which leads them to fantasize and give in to the urge of watching people without consent. And it may begin by them accidentally observing someone, but then they continue to look, which reinforces the behavior until it becomes an addiction. Because they have low self-esteem and they feel powerless and observing other people is an opportunity for them to disconnect from themselves and to deflect their shame. While if they were to engage, they would be forced to connect to themselves and then the shame would be on them. Because they already feel powerless and they have low self-esteem. So this is why they prefer to watch. This is why they prey on people because they're looking for someone weak. They're looking for an advantage, which is why you cannot trust them in any sort of agreement or compromise, because they're only going to be looking for loopholes or weak points. They lack integrity, they're dishonest, and they have weak moral principles, which is why when no one is looking, they will not do the right thing. They will do whatever they think will benefit them. As long as it appears that they can't get caught, as long as they think that they can get away with it, they will do anything. They will abide by no rules or restrictions in conflicts or disputes because they have no limits. And this is why they cannot be trusted because they will not honor anything. They have no morals because they have no self-esteem, which is why they don't even deserve to be around people, because all they're going to do is hurt and betray you. They will not play fair. They will always have to gain an unfair advantage, because that's just how they're wired. 
They're used to not getting what they want. So why would they play fair? Why would they play by the rules when they feel so hopeless and inadequate inside? And they feel like they can't win that way. They gave up on rules a long time ago because they thought the rules were not in their favour. They felt vulnerable. They couldn't function in that arrangement. So this is why they break rules. Because it's the only way they're ever going to have power. They don't want to look at themselves. They don't want to think that maybe there's things that they could improve. Which is why they will never act with honesty, fairness or decency. Because they don't have any integrity. So you cannot negotiate or compromise with them. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Share your thoughts in the comment section. Hit the subscribe button to receive the notifications. If you would like to support the channel, you can donate at paypal.me slash narcsurvivor. You can book a one-on-one -on -one with me on my website. It's narcsurvivor.co.uk. Thank you for watching and I'll talk to you soon.